Most important thing about being a barber? Cutting hair and providing like a good service, but also at the same time, like you, you need to kind of like um, stay in touch with like the people that you're cutting. So it's a little bit more than just you coming and getting a haircut and leaving out the door because the whole point of being a barber is retaining your clients. So that means developing like a relationship with these people. So therefore when they like come back to you, they have like things to talk about and like they're more interested in coming to see you again. Like, so say if you guys talk about their problems or th certain situations that they're going through in life or you know, you congratulate them on life accomplishments or like you're a little bit invested into their life, same ways that, you know, as a friend would be in your life, you know? So you, you kind of just, you treat them like a friend and uh, you also provide a good service. I understand a lot more people now because I can kind of like, I have a very like diverse clientele. So it's kind of like I talk to different people every single day and I've been doing it for almost over five years. So it's kind of like I have a better understanding for people. So when it comes to just like talking people in general, just you're a little bit more like, uh, I guess you could say you have an easier time having conversations. Like if you were a person that was never really a person to like have that many conversations before, like I feel like if you become a barber, like you feel like your social skills will grow a little bit more. Like you'll just become, I feel like I conversate more, I conversate better, like I can give off a better impression, you know? I feel like my words can work for me nowadays. What's up, Kev? Long time no see. Good. What's up, my regular? Yes, sir. Did you work today? Yeah. I was in Milton today. What, photo shoot? Uh, yeah. Covering up that bed. Soccer? Yeah. Is that all you do now, Kevin? Soccer? Yeah. Nice. Is that all you like doing? Yeah, pretty much for work, yeah. For the haircut, are we doing the same thing? Are you still growing out this? Yeah, still growing it out, so. I and then taper, taper on the taper sides? Yeah. Are you leaving the top? Uh, yeah. What I could do is I could put some texture on the top, not trim it, texturize it, so that when it does grow, it grows a little bit more texture, and then kind of leave the back, yeah. let it kind of grow because it's still catching up, yeah. and then just fade the sides. Yeah, let's do it. So, sorry, what's your favorite thing about like the job that you do right now? Favorite thing? It's always a good question. Yeah. I think it's not really a part of the job, I guess you could say, but I think just the ability to kind of the flexible the flexibility of my schedule, to be honest. You feel like you have, you could choose when you want to work? Yeah, um, I'm one of the five partners now, so. So it's a big company now, eh? Yeah, it's growing. It's still a small business, but mm -hmm. um, but yeah, growing every year and growing at a quite fast rate, so. That's you know, insane. A lot of growing pains, but. Um, Do you feel like you did everything right? Or like, is there oh, some no. things that like, you feel like, oh shoot, I failed here? I don't think. I think I, I progressed a lot quicker than I expected. Mm -hmm. But no, there was definitely screw ups on the way. But I think that's the important part is kind of accept those mm -hmm. and understand that it, it'll never go kind of as as to plan. Even if it like even if it was to to now to plan, one day it will not go to plan. Mm -hmm. Pretty much every day of my life, <laughs> it doesn't really go to plan. Yeah, realistically, with everybody, with you and. And like someone can show up five minutes late to an appointment, someone can yeah, 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 yeah. throws off everything, but literally it can have, it can be anything. Or you know, someone hits your car or mm -hmm. whatever. There's just so many things that can go wrong, but I think the important part is just to keep moving, and that's what kind of has helped me along this only four and a half year journey, but mm -hmm. I'm, I'm gonna use that to continue forward for the next 10, 20, 40 years. In your line of work, uh, when it comes time to being a boss, like when you go towards someone, do you ever have that fear of like, okay, maybe if I like say something wrong to him, he might resent me for it? I think you're gonna have that sometimes, right? And that's just because, especially when you're new to everything. Mm -hmm. But I know, I know, and I've told 
my my co-workers and colleagues before like the energy is we keep everybody to the degree of superiority and skill that we hold for ourselves mm -hmm. so if i know i hold myself to this crazy standard you better you bet your ass i'm gonna hold you to that same standard yeah so in terms of that boss relationship yeah like of course there's gonna be times where, like oh i hope they don't take this the wrong way yeah but i obviously try my best to let them know like hey like you're doing a great job i just know that you could be better and that i think you could be better if you tried this mm -hmm. and you kind of keep that type of energy about it and it, it, the best part is just open communication that's the easiest way to get around that because okay. if someone does get their feelings hurt which is mm -hmm. fine that's gonna happen then you just gotta let them know like hey like i didn't i didn't mean for you to to feel this way about this i was just trying to you know We'll do the same standard because I want to see you. Succeed. Yeah, I want to see you succeed, 100%. And I feel like that's the biggest thing is, bro, I, I truly want to see people succeed even further than I did. Just to know I did a good job. Because if someone succeeds more than I did, that means, like, what I did inspired him yeah. to do something bigger. And, I think and that's, that's a good thing. Yeah, that's where people go wrong, is that people have this, like, ego complex, like, oh, they can't be better than me. Yeah, exactly. And meanwhile, it's like, how about you flip it? How about, like, I need them to be better. Exactly. And then when you do it that way, it's kind of, like, impossible to have anyone's feelings hurt because it's like, damn, like, this guy actually wants me to be the best barber I can or braider, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just crazy that I don't know of many teachers or leaders or bosses that I've had in my life that have, have went that way about it. How long have you been with your girl? Like, eight months now? Jeez. It's getting serious, man. Man, I'm trying to propose soon. <laughs> I'm not even... There's no joke. Yeah? Yeah, bro. That's crazy. But, like, it's it's not easy, bro. It's... I'm, I've been running a lot, like, going through a lot of complications just with that. Because, yeah. bro, it's, it's a little different for, like... As it, like, in kind of, like, our culture slash religion, it's just, like... In order for us to live together, we have to be married. Be married yeah. You know? But it's kind of hard when her parents don't want you to marry her. Oh. Yeah, so that's where I kind of run into the complications. But it's just like you can't, you know when you have something good and you don't want to let it go? Yeah, of course. So I feel like in time, like it, it's going to take some time, right? Sounds like a soap opera. Bro, it is, bro. It's like fucking Romeo and Juliet type. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. I'm sitting here like, yo, like, what is going on, bro? Yeah, I've been through that that kind of stuff in terms of someone not wanting you to be with their daughter. It all comes down to them not knowing you. It, it, they're not knowing you, and then their own, their own issues, right? Like, yeah. It's hard. Like, I'm going to Is that like in your relationship right now? Yeah. It, it's just been touch and go with her, her dad. Yeah. For eight months, yeah. I know. That's the time where it gets real serious. <laughs> Honestly, like, bro, if her parents just let me, like, I would. Yeah. But it's just like they won't let me. Rightfully so, you know? It's their daughter. <laughs> Here you go, my man. I'm sorry, I'm gonna spray alcohol. Perfect. Okay. Gotcha. Hey, what's up, brother? How's it going, bro? Where'd you come from? Work? Yeah, we're just working. I work as a technical engineer, so... Is that what you went to school for? No, actually, not at all. Sometimes when you go to school, it's not really what you want to do, right? Wait, what'd you go to school for? Nursing. Damn. Yeah. Hey, right, what are you doing for your haircut? Honestly, it's just not working out right now. I feel like if we can shorter the front end a little bit. Okay. And then here, actually, hold on. Let me show you a photo of it if you want. Yeah. I think uh, I can kind of see it already. You kind of get like a mid fade. Yeah, so and the bottom is definitely like, yeah, a little mid, mid fade. Mid fade. And then the like top. a little bit off the top, you want to keep some like, That's exactly a little it. bit darker. This right there, I was looking handsome here. 
Okay. I need that. The top, that length. Yeah. Sides faded. That's exactly it. How long have you been doing this for? I've been cutting hair for about like, I'd say I started when I was 17. I'm 21. Mm. So first time I actually started was like in like a basement on like a couple of friends. And from there, I kind of just like stopped midway in high school. And then uh, I ended up getting into a shop around like 18 years old when I was in college. And then from there, I just kept on doing it. Now I'm, I own my own business. That's sick. So you said you went to school for nursing? Yeah, man, Brock. How long sick. did you do that for? Four years, a four year program. Mm. Well, honestly, I enjoy the studying part of it, but there's a lot more to life, in my opinion, than to just do, than do the same thing. I found out I was more of the entrepreneurial, doing different things every day kind of guy, so. Mm -hmm. So you felt like if you went and did your own thing, you would like, you'd enjoy it more than if you'd like, stayed in school, went and did the nursing and like all that type of stuff? That's exactly it, man. That's exactly it. Do you like what you do now though? Oh, I'm in love with it, man. I'm in yeah? love with it. Oh, yeah. So that means you don't regret it, eh? Uh, no regrets here. Not me. That's the thing that was my biggest, you know, influence is like, you don't want to grow, you know, 10 years, 20 years down the line. I just should have. I should have done this. I should have done that, right? I feel like lately I've been thinking about this one thing where it's like a lot of people, you'll see online saying, oh, follow your dreams, do what you mm -hmm. like, do what you love. A lot of people kind of started brushing it off. I was like, yeah, but not everybody has a chance to do that, right? Mm -hmm. The thing I've been thinking about lately though is, really, if you think about it, it's a moral obligation to do what you love and what yeah. you like. Um, I was saying that to a friend uh, you know, a couple days ago. If you don't do what you like, you know what I mean? You're gonna be miserable at some point, now or later. Mm -hmm. And what ends up happening is whoever is surrounded by you, so not only are you gonna affect yourself, your mental health, your mental being, your, your spiritual self, you're gonna impact everybody around you. You're not gonna be happy. You're not gonna be, you know, you're not gonna be benefiting people around you. Exactly. So really, it's actually not. People will be like, "Oh, I'm not. I'm not fortunate enough to do what I love. You know, I'm not fortunate enough to be able to drop my job and, and pursue something." Mm -hmm. But not really. It's an actual obligation. It's your moral obligation to do what you love and what you're passionate about, mm -hmm. and be the best at it as, that you can be. You know. Exactly. But yeah, man, that's, that's amazing stuff. Bro, I think it's so important to just like, even if you don't love what you do at the moment, find a way to love it. Find little things in it that make you want to go do it every day. Because if you go to work with like a negative mindset, yeah, you're going to come out with it negatively. So that's why I just like to walk into work every single day with positive Happy. attitude. Yeah. So that way it transfers on to the people beside you, you know? It really does. Yeah, yeah, it's and energy is like really important to me. I feel like the way you like present yourself and show people the way you are, like it'll kind of like bounce Come off back. people. Yeah. Oh yeah, big time, big time. I've had that big change this year though. Yeah. Relationship with the parents. Yeah. Oh man, I think as you were saying earlier, when you mature, you change. Mhm. Mm man, like I feel like growing that relationship with parents is so vital, and I don't think people are actually giving it its importance. Yeah, I know. You know, we, I'm, I don't know about you, but I came here as an immigrant. Mm -hmm. uh, what is it now? I think uh, seven, eight years ago. And you know, when you come young and your parents have that culture and they have the culture here mm -hmm. and you have that clash. Yeah. You, you know, people don't talk about it enough and don't think about it enough, but it really creates uh, a certain dynamic with the parents that sometimes it doesn't work. You know, mm -hmm. they might want you to, to hold on to some things and you want to be somewhere. And uh, a lot of people don't recover from that. Mm -hmm. And I won't lie to you, like we ha had that issue for a long time. Although we're alhamdulillah, we're always, you know, having an amazing relationship. Yeah. It was never as, it was never as comfortable. Yeah. It was never comfortable, right? So like you're saying, right? Two different people, one is with, when they're with their parents, when they're with whatever. Yeah. And uh, I feel like that growth with the parents made so much difference. Right you feel now, like you're more open with your parents nowadays? Brother, right now, you know, the same way I'm talking with you, mm -hmm. I have my dad sitting right here. Same exact thing. Mm -hmm. I have mom, same exact thing. And when people get comfortable like that, mm -hmm. it's actually very, very beneficial. Because a lot of people think like, yo, if I go to my parents and I, I talk to them about this idea, they might be like, man, don't mm -hmm. do it, don't do it. They're going to limit me. But yo, obviously some people have 
you know, parents are not, not all parents are, are, are supposed to be Open-minded. parents. Open-minded. Well, not, not every parent deserves to be a parent sometimes, right? Yeah. But like, when you're, if your parents are reasonable enough, and they tell you something, it's like, you know, it's usually for your own benefit, or always yeah, for your own course. benefit, right? That's your parent, yeah. So, honestly, I never thought I would benefit from it as much as I did, but, mm-hmm. oh man, I wouldn't sacrifice anything for the relationship I have with my parents. That's important. Oh, yeah. I feel like, me personally, growing up in like, the household I grew up, I don't know if it's just me, but we are kind of just like, it wasn't really much, showing emotions in a sense you know i feel like it was just like yeah of course your parents love you but it's just you didn't get that sense of like uh warmth i guess yeah exactly like the way that you would kind of look at it as like other people would get it like from their parents like yo his dad is doing this like obviously you get it in a different way but it just like i feel like as i grew up i kind of just like suppressed all of my emotions yeah because yeah. I felt like that's what I was supposed to do. Because I, I never seen my dad cry. I never seen... Like, obviously, you see your mom cry sometimes. But, like, it's just, like, when you see what your dad does, you kind of try to, like, match it here. Him. Like, you oh, know? yeah, big time. Like, big I need time. to be more so a man. I need to, like, hold into all of these. Yeah, we tend to su- suppress that vulnerability, right? Yeah. But and yo, I feel like I can't go to my dad and talk about certain issues. and like, Yeah, yeah. You know? But as I grew up, I just started like knocking down those barriers. I'm just like, you know what, like, maybe it's at the end on me day, to you do know, it, right? What, what's what's the worst that could happen? You know, like, I'm gonna go talk to him about my problems. He's not gonna judge me. That's my dad. Yeah. You know what I mean? I Sometimes told my dad a lot of my mistakes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. See? Ya? Mm. My. Yo, book me right now, yeah? <laughs> yeah. For two weeks from now? Let's do it right now. Bro, you can do it, 100%. Let's do it. I truly, like, truly I appreciate this. I got you, bro. I don't even know what to ask you, you know? You just... Just do what I do, bro. Yo. <laughs> we got a quick dab for that one, uh, For real, you. I actually appreciate it, man. I do. I got you, bro. Yo. I think client barber relationships are actually important. It's like a lot of men, I feel like, can't really go places to talk to people, you know? The good thing about barbering is you always have like multiple people you can talk to. Everybody that comes in here, uh, I truly care about what their life is like, and I feel like they truly care about mine. We remember what, what we talked about last, what we've been going through, we talk about our problems to each other. It's just knowing so much about these people, it's just, it's a little bit more than a client, it's more so of a like friend. You should always treat people the way you wanna be treated because at the end of the day, it's important to leave a good impression on every single person that you interact with in this life. At some point, we're all gonna pass away, we're all gonna leave. I want every interaction to be a positive interaction if I can make it happen, just to make the world a little bit of a better place. That's good? Okay.